Hello everyone, once again uh, to uh, another talk here on Physio TV. Uh, we are celebrating World Heart Day uh, week and uh, today uh, we have a second session uh, by Dr. Prajakta Sahasrabuddhi who is Associate Professor here at uh, Sanjeti Institute College of Physiotherapy in the Department of Cardiovascular and Respiratory Physiotherapy. Uh, Ma'am will be speaking to us today about uh, screening before exercise and I welcome ma'am and uh, I request her to kindly begin with today's session. So uh, we were talking about, uh, I think most of the uh, audience is uh, physiotherapists and few or health professionals who are here. So I think it is a common agreement among all the health professionals that exercises are the most economic and very easy to perform uh, way of preventing heart diseases at multiple levels. So you can prevent the heart disease from occurring. Here I'm talking about, of course, coronary artery disease. So from prevention of coronary artery disease from occurring, as well as if the disease is present already, then exercises uh, or performing exercises is also a very important lifestyle modification factor, which takes care of other risk factors as well. I think our later speakers are going to put more light on it. So I'll not go into that. But uh, before going ahead, I want everyone to reflect on these three scenarios. Okay, a 45 year old obese individual who has never exercised, wants to lose weight, hence wants to start exercising. A 45 year old individual complaining of breathlessness on activity, but they want to engage into some form of physical activity. And third scenario, a 45-year-old individual who has undergone PTCA or percutaneous uh, coronary angioplasty few years ago and wants to resume their exercise routine after angioplasty. Uh, so can somebody unmute themselves and answer this question? What could be the uh, risk over here? Is it okay if they start exercising suddenly? What would be the common risk over here if they start exercising suddenly? Okay, uh, so I think I, I should go ahead with the answer. I know this is post prandial uh, Everybody must have had a good lunch. Uh, but still, I'll try to keep it as interactive as possible because I want to emphasize on this concept of pre-participation screening. So uh, in all three scenarios, the major uh, point of concern is that we do not know what is the safety of exercises in these individuals. So with this notion, the objectives of this session is to understand need of pre-participation risk screening. We'll, we'll uh, talk about what is pre-participation risk screening more uh, in the later slides. Then to understand when should it be done and to sensitize uh, audience towards various approaches in pre-participation risk screening. So the key question is why this pre-participation risk screening is important. Okay, and what is pre-participation risk screening? So when a person is engaging into physical activity, I am trying to systematically analyze whether it would be safe for the individual to participate without any problems or not. And there are multiple approaches which have been taken uh, to identify this risk and accordingly we can guide the person. And why is it important is uh, whenever we start exercising, exercise is a form of physical stress. Okay, whenever we start exercising, there is going to be sympathetic system activation, which would be associated with a lot of changes in the cardiovascular system. And important changes on the in the heart is increased heart rate, increased stroke volume, increased cardiac output, hence increase in systolic blood pressure. So overall, the function and expectation or demand from the heart is going to increase. Now, if the heart is not equipped to take this increased load, there could be adverse reactions or occurrence of adverse reactions. Now, these adverse reactions could be more benign, like for example, few arrhythmias, which are not life-threatening, or it may be more malignant form of arrhythmias which may get developed. So out of these adverse uh, reactions or adverse outcomes which would be there, the most lethal or most fatal is 
myocardial infarction uh, cardiac arrest and the worst of it is sudden cardiac death now the incidence of sudden cardiac death or cardiac arrest which is associated with exercises is extremely rare okay it is one in a millions or billions is the chance but still it is a chance which nobody is willing to take and that is why we are going for this pre participation which is screening or identifying the risk of these things from occurring beforehand so what are the indications of doing it so going back to those three scenarios if somebody wants to start exercising suddenly with very high intensity then um, if somebody is already having any uh, risk factors dr pirodia has already spoken about two of very important risk factors that is hypertension and diabetes mellitus there are few more also we'll discuss about those then symptoms and symptoms of cardiovascular diseases or some signs which are indicating towards existence of occurred cardiovascular disease and third is if there is already diagnosed cardiovascular or metabolic disease and person wants to engage into physical activity so how is it done doing it is fairly simple okay we anyways we are talking to a person we are doing subjective assessment we take histories from the individual but when we are taking histories we have to be mindful of these things when we are interviewing the person we have we should know if this risk factors are there in their history so when while interviewing a person we have to enlist the risk factors enlist if any symptoms which may indicate towards occult or obvious cardiac disease should be identified they should be put on the paper risk should be analyzed and then as per the risk which is present further recommendation whether the person should be uh, engaging into physical activity on their own whether they should be engaging under supervision under monitoring or they should not be doing it so that stratification has to be done okay so this is a simplified flow chart i would say which is there for exercise prescription so for doing it more systematically we have certain tools okay uh, we have self guided questionnaires or we have professionally guided questionnaires now these tools are given by many associations and societies which are working in the field of cardiovascular medicine so the most popular ones are american college of sports medicine american heart association and american association of cardio pulmonary the cardiovascular and pulmonary rehabilitation so uh, we are going to discuss these three approaches first we'll start with guidelines given by american college of sports medicine okay so um, they have given two types of questionnaires this par q plus is a self uh, documented questionnaire so it is a do it yourself kind of a questionnaire they have given a uh, streamlined protocol it is a self informed questionnaire and there are certain set of questions which are asked which an individual is supposed to solve and on the basis of that the directives clear directives are given whether the person can exercise on their own or they should speak to their physician first before engaging into physical activities so so this is how par q plus looks like okay so uh, if we try to enlist the risk factors for cardiovascular disease uh, they are non modifiable risk factors are age gender family history non modi uh, sorry non modifiable risk factors are age gender and family history modifiable risk factors are presence of uh, conditions like pre diabetes hypertension if person is smoking if they are having more of sedentary lifestyle if they are obese uh, or if they have got um, yeah so so the same things are asked in this questionnaire if the person has got any heart disease if they are having any symptoms like chest pain or something if they are having dizziness okay so so those questions are enlisted apart from that parq is also asking for certain medical conditions like vertigo or certain medi uh, musculoskeletal conditions which are likely to be exacerbated by the uh, more impactful physical activity which could be there so if answer to all these questions is no okay then the person can participate into physical activity okay if any of that is yes they are supposed to go for 
the further questions okay so now here let's say if the person is saying uh, yes for any musculoskeletal condition then in depth analysis of that or uh, the further risk stratification or risk can be identified through these questions okay so if the specifics of the pain uh, if there was any recent fracture or not if the person is on steroid injection again which is going to alter the outcome of exercise or increase the likely likelihood of adversities is going to be identified okay so such they they have included about cancer cardiovascular conditions high blood pressure metabolic conditions like diabetes it could be type 1 or type 2 okay mental health problems balance issues respiratory issues okay stroke all these things are asked okay again if answer to all these questions is no then person can engage into physical activity even if it is of high intensity if not then person is supposed to Uh, self refer to a physician get their clearance and as per their directives they are supposed to engage into physical activity but it is fairly simple a person can do it by themselves they do not require any uh, guidance to solve such form of questionnaires that is the biggest advantage okay uh, acsm has also given a more professionally directed tool which is there so now there are three major factors which are considered in pre participation screening that is if any risk factors for cad is present if signs or symptoms are present and if already existing diagnosis for a cardiovascular disease is present so in the form they are asking the same thing okay if they have already diagnosed condition like heart attack if they had heart attack heart failure cardiac arrhythmias congenital heart diseases etc then if they have any symptoms or if they have any considerable risk factors which is present now on the basis of that okay this was done earlier huh? i'll tell you again so the, these are the risk factors which we have identified and acsm has also given operational definitions for each of those okay whom to call uh, a smoker when uh it is called ex smoker what is the significant family history uh, uh if a person is not exercising at least 30 minutes in a day then it is called sedentary lifestyle and so on and so forth okay and these risk factor score is calculated okay so if a person has score and at the end they have given high hdl cholesterol as a negative risk factor so if uh high density cholesterol is more than 60 mg dl then one point has to be subtracted from the total score okay so if this total score is less than 2 okay then the per the risk for developing cad is considered as low and these individuals can participate into any form of physical activity safely may it be moderate or high intensity okay no pre uh, health screening or health check up or physician clearance is required for these individuals now if the risk factors are more than 2 then for high intensity exercises it is better that they get approval from a physician okay and if the person has got any signs and symptoms or already existing disease as per this questionnaire okay then they are supposed to always consult a physician before engaging into any form of physical activity okay so this is what which was done earlier but uh, there were multiple objections which were raised to this approach first of all we spoke about that risk of sudden cardiac death being very minimal and extremely rare whereas if you look at the risk factors for developing cad for example hypertension diabetes or other factors they are extremely common okay so they are saying that for once in a billion chance okay we are referring too many people to physician which is in turn increasing healthcare costs for investigation and diagnosis and because of this it is reducing overall motivation to the exercise the whole point of uh, what multiple societies are doing that we are trying to uh, push people towards more more active lifestyle and by adding so many steps to it we are kind of demotivating people so 
ACSM had a consensus meeting again and they went through a lot of literature and they came to a consensus that only three factors have to be considered uh, before giving directives to a person. One is level of activity, then known or occult cardiac or metabolic disease and intensity of exercise to be achieved. Okay, so level of activity means if person is sedentary or active. Okay, if person is sedentary and they want to engage into physical activity, then they can they should not be put directly onto high intensity activity. If they do not have any sign or symptoms or already existing disease, they should be always started with low intensity, uh, going to moderate and then going to higher intensity. Okay, but as such, they do not require any physician clearance for it. Okay, if any occult or known cardiac or metabolic disease is present, these people should be referred to a physician. Okay, and a clearance has to be taken before putting these people on any exercise program. Definitely for high intensity, low or moderate intensity still can be started if it was part of their earlier lifestyle. Okay, and I have already spoken about the intensity of exercise when we were talking about the previous two points. Okay, so that was about ACSM approach. Then uh, American Heart Association also has given a risk stratification table. Now, this is the most simplified version of this table. So they have categorized people into four classes, class A, B, C, and D. There are multiple subclasses also, which I have not included in this table. But to put it in a very simplified way, class A is the people who may or may not have any risk factors, but they definitely do not have any signs or symptoms. Class B and C are people who are having known uh, coronary artery disease, valvular disease, congenital disease, okay? But the difference between class B and C is that B is, they do not have any complications of the disease, whereas class C is, uh, there could be complications where NYHA class 3 and 4 is also included over here. And class B is the patients who are un hemodynamically unstable, uh, for example, they might be having unstable angina, uh, malignant arrhythmias, uncompensated heart failure. So, of course, class B is definitely contraindicated for participation into any exercises, okay, because they are not hemodynamically stable and it is an important absolute contraindication for exercise engagement. Talking about class A, they do not have any signs and symptoms, but if they have any risk factor which is poorly controlled, if such multiple risk factors are present which are not controlled properly and if the uh, professional healthcare professional feels that uh, it would be better for them to get a physician clearance first because the chances of occult cardiac disease is more, so they have to be referred to the physician first. So it's a judgment call of a professional. That's why uh, as an exercise expert, we physiotherapists should be aware what are the risk factors, uh, how much control should be there and who should be referred to these people. But this class B and C should definitely have a clearance first and even when they are um, put on exercise program, at least first few sessions should be monitored and supervised. And uh, these things would be considered in health, uh, health checkup by the physician, baseline and exercise vital parameters, baseline and exercise ECG. So uh, if the physician feels the need, uh, 12 lead stress test can be conducted for the individual. Cardiac function uh, can be assessed by 2D echo. Angiography, if it is required, if signs and symptoms are too much indicative of occlusive coronaries, then in that case, angiography and to check uh, control of diabetes or uh, how, how much the diabetes mellitus is controlled. So blood sugar level have to be assessed along with the clinical examination of a person. Okay. Uh, so third important approach is AACVPR. So this is more for the secondary prevention. So this is more for uh, people who already have cardiac disease and they are supposed to be uh, put on exercise program as a lifestyle modification, it is for them. So it is 
assume that there has to be this this screening and this assessment which has to be done so that stress test has to be done for the person to be echo has to be done because if you see the factors uh, and risk categorization for mild moderate and high they have given functional capacity and ejection fraction as one of the parameter so uh, the mild disease people do not have any abnormal stress test so stress test is negative with functional capacity more than 7 met and ejection fraction is more than 50% moderate stress test is weakly positive with functional capacity more than 5 mets and ejection fraction 40 to 49 at rest and with high st uh, stress test is significantly positive with uh, ejection fraction less than 39 so as you can see with as uh, with high risk the heart condition is not uh, good enough to take increasing load of the exercise and hence the session or exercise response becomes unpredictable. So in such scenario, there has to be a constant supervision of a uh, either cardiac rehabilitation specialist or a cardiologist or somebody who, who's trained into managing those emergencies has to be there. And that's why this risk stratification is there. If high risk is there, on ACGPR, CVPR classification, of course, the person's likelihood of developing any adverse outcome is going to be higher. So uh, that was about the three common approaches we use for pre-participation screening. As a take-home message, I would like to emphasize that exercise is like a medicine. So. Uh, self-medication we do not uh, uh, we do not uh, encourage uh, self-medication so first of all it is important for us to know who is indicated to take that medicine and what would be the safety value of it so uh, i think for this reason the pre-participation uh, risk stratification is an extremely important step before deciding who should be put on uh, uh, how much exercise volume? Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, today's informative talk. Uh, I'm sure our viewers have uh, learned a lot, especially their questions and queries about uh, can I really start with exercise? Do I need to consult a doctor? Uh, hopefully, our viewers have had their uh, questions answered. And I thank uh, Prajakta, ma'am, once again for uh, her talk today. Um, thank you very much to uh, Physio TV team and to all our viewers. And uh, once again, I wish everyone a very happy World Heart Day. Uh, stay safe and uh, stay healthy. Keep your heart healthy.